the world is sound. Sound is the music of life. surrounded by sound. It's hard to imagine what it would be like to live in silence. When I ride my bike to work, I get a feeling for what I wish I could hear. When I had my hearing, I was a classroom teacher, and I taught U.S. history, American government, things like that. And I was a very verbal type of person in class. And I always tried to get a lot of participation from the kids. You know, how are things going? Why is this happening? And all this to try to get people to think. And when I lost my hearing, that was out. I know that what originally happened was that I was in a fire as a result of some tank truck driving and a spill of fuel and all. And while I was in the hospital, when I was getting, I suppose, what you'd call life-saving treatment, that all of a sudden I just wasn't responsive and people you know, wondered why I didn't pay attention at all. And finally, someone realized that what I had done had lost my hearing. And I tried to even forget, you know, that I couldn't hear. I kept on asking the question, but how come I don't hear? How come I don't hear? And finally, just the personal nurse I had that let me know a little bit more and more that I really was dead. No idea if there was hope involved or anything else. I was just deaf, and that's the way it was learned. When I finally returned home from the hospital without my hearing, I was very concerned about my job because I could see a family that was going to be on welfare or something. But I was lucky that the school was interested and that they had enough confidence in me that they wanted me to stay on. And I was very concerned about going back to the classroom, but they felt that I'd fit better in the library operation. It takes less oral communication in the library, and luckily you can talk in many cases on a just person-to-person -person basis where lip reading becomes possible. Some of the aspects of my job are difficult now that when the phone rings, I can't answer it, so there's always someone answering it for me. I'm sure there are lots of questions that are asked here that they don't get the answer, at least the detail that I would want to get. The people don't like to struggle with their lip reader. Someone has a hard time communicating and they politely just stare clear of you. If they have to struggle, they'll find the answer or go without the answer. Now, you just feel isolated because most of the time, you're around people, at least in my family, my job, and all. Uh, and I have lunch, and there are teachers all around me. They're discussing school politics, their latest trip, what have you. And I don't participate. Some of my closest friends in the faculty, we don't have much to do with each other now because we used to be able to talk easily. Now I just can't understand them, and you can't carry on much of a conversation they have to write to you. And I'm in just situation after situation where I'm trying to understand or should understand, but really I find I'm just sitting there and other people don't be communicating. I'm there physically, but that's all. Well, 
when you sure you just can figure you're pretty well out socially you have made some old time friends that stick with you you make a few special new friends but in a social situation you just don't fit if i'm out bowling with the group they're all chatting and all i'm doing is bowling i'm not doing the side play or when there's a light opera that comes on the town, I'd like to take my wife. She's going to go with some woman friend out with me. So it completely curtails what you'd consider our dating activity. That if I go someplace, it's better if I do something like camping where there are just trees around me and my personal family. Or if I go to something where there's not oral communication, camping, driving, or things like that. And finally, someone, it must have been state compensation insurance, that suggested that I go to a hearing foundation and see if anything could be done. And it must have been the second or third visit, but I remember one of the doctors came up and said that there was hope that they were working on this new electronic instrument that might help. And it's the first optimistic word I had heard. It's just unbelievable, the difference between just a void there, of wondering what you're going to do and having hope. That we can overcome with a... Charles Grazer, for 10 years, had known the frustration and loneliness of the deaf. Now, what we do, or what we... He had the courage to have a set of electrodes implanted into his inner ear. Before the turn of the century, Faraday discovered that if an electric current is passed through the head, the individual will hear a sound. It was soon discovered that many deaf persons would hear a sound if an electric current was applied near the ear. This information was to haunt generations of otologists who realized that somehow, if we could apply minute electric currents, of sufficient complexity, we could indeed make the deaf hear. During the 60s, information gathered from animal experimentation regarding the implanting of wire electrodes into the body, combined with the rapidly advancing electronic technology, made it apparent that the time had finally come for us to take the giant step of making a totally deaf person hear through electronics. 